pra Oslo, pra sair no Oslo do Logo as da terra da do bacalhau. Oi, tudo bem? I'm Professor Jason. Welcome back to my Jumpstart Brazilian Portuguese course. In today's lesson, I'll be teaching you how to use connectors and transition words. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Vamos começar! Okay, so before I start presenting definitions and explanations and examples, I wanted to share just a couple quick notes about this lesson. I did prepare a detailed explanation of this topic. What are conjunctions? What are transitions? How do these rhetorical and grammatical devices work? That is going to be shared with you. The script of that um, deep dive explanation is in the notes, the description for this video here on YouTube. So if you'd like to check that out, I encourage you to do so. What I want to spend most of my time then is on actually introducing, sharing examples of conjunctions and transition words and phrases so you can see what they mean and how they work. So we'll introduce conjunctions, I'll talk about the basics of conjunctions, and then I'll share definitions and examples of informal and formal conjunctions. Then we'll do the same with the rhetorical device known as transitions or transition words and phrases. I'll tell you a little bit about what they are, then I'll share lots of examples of some informal transitions and some more formal transitions. So we've got a lot to cover, there's a lot of good content, bear with me to the end. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, I know I said that the description or the explanation was in the video notes, but I couldn't resist just the briefest of explanations. So what are coordinating conjunctions? Well, coordinating conjunctions are words used to connect two independent clauses, independent clauses being complete grammatical sentences that could stand on their own. So in the example, eu moro no Rio, that's a complete sentence, I live in Rio. Ela mora em São Paulo, another complete sentence, but I'm connecting them with the coordinating conjunction and. Eu moro no Rio e ela mora em São Paulo. You can see that coordinating conjunctions in Portuguese are placed right in the middle between the two independent clauses and they're often preceded by commas. I say often because you'll see some rules that say they're always, some rules that have exceptions depending on the type of conjunction. Kind of one rule of thumb that you often hear in English grammar classes is that if the subject of the second clause is different than the subject of the first clause, you need a comma. So things like that. So I say usually often preceded by commas, but it kind of depends. And if you feel a pause in between the clauses, you probably want to use a comma. All right, so let's jump into our series of coordinating conjunctions from Brazilian Portuguese, starting with the simplest and sort of the most obvious that everyone probably already knows, and that is E, which means and. It connects two or more independent clauses. So, eu moro no Rio e trabalho no centro. Ela viaja muito e gosta de postar fotos. She travels a lot and she likes to post pictures. Nós vamos estudar e eles vão assistir TV. We're going to study and they are going to watch TV. Again, you'll see that both clauses are independent clauses, main clauses, grammatical sentences. They're being separated, actually connected would be the right word, with this um, coordinating conjunction and or e. A minha mãe cozinha bem e o meu pai adora comer. So again, two independent clauses joined, connected with the coordinating conjunction and or e. This particular coordinating conjunction, neng or ineng, is much less frequent, much more in common in Brazilian Portuguese or in English for that matter. It means nor and it connects two negative independent clauses, sort of, sort of reinforces one negative clause with another negative clause, just like nor does in English. So, eu não moro no Rio, nem trabalho no centro. I don't live in Rio nor do I work downtown, or I don't work downtown either. Ela não viaja muito, e nem gosta de postar fotos. So, e nem is another form of this. She doesn't travel a lot, and she doesn't like to post pictures. A minha mãe não foi ao mercado, nem fez o almoço. She didn't go shopping, and she didn't make lunch either, nor did she make lunch. Nós não vamos estudar. Nem trabalhar neste verão. We're not going to study, nor are we going to work this summer, 
or we're not going to work this summer either. Pedro não gosta nem de fruta nem de salada. He doesn't like fruit or, we would say in English, salad. Our next coordinating conjunction is O, which means OR, and it connects two independent clauses indicating alternatives or sometimes consequences. So again, not brain science, this is the same as OR in English. Podemos cozinhar algo aqui ou podemos pedir uma pizza. We can cook something here or we can order a pizza. Ou você me liga hoje ou a gente conversa amanhã no trabalho. So this is the O O structure, which is frequent in Spanish and Portuguese. So either you call me today or we'll talk tomorrow at work. Ou você me liga hoje ou a gente conversa amanhã no trabalho. So it's a common um, form or structure in Brazilian Portuguese. Procure na loja ou peça online. Look in the store or order online. O Jorge precisa passar na prova ou vai repetir a aula. He needs to pass the quiz, the test, or he's going to repeat the class. Moving on to mas. Mas. So, this one is also extremely similar to its English equivalent, but it's used to connect two independent clauses indicating contrast or difference. Eu moro no Rio, mas trabalho em outra cidade. But I work in another city. Ela viaja muito, mas não gosta de postar fotos. But she doesn't like posting pictures. Nós vamos estudar, mas eles preferem assistir TV. We're going to study, but they prefer to watch TV. A minha mãe cozinha bem, mas meu pai sempre come pouco. My mother cooks well, but my father always eats very little. So it just means but very straightforward, mas. Another coordinating conjunction, again, it's going to separate or connect is the better word. It's going to connect two independent clauses, two freestanding, what could be freestanding grammatical sentences is porém, which means yet or however. Chegou tarde, porém conseguiu fazer a prova. He arrived late or she arrived late, yet he or she was able to take the test. Não tinha muito dinheiro, porém conseguiu comprar tudo. He didn't have a lot of money, yet he was able to buy everything. Ela me explicou o filme, porém não entendi a sua interpretação. She explained the film to me, however, or yet, I didn't understand her interpretation. So again, porém, it's fairly common, and it means yet. All right, moving on to another coordinating conjunction. Here we have portanto, portanto. And other forms like por isso, então, assim. I'll put the other alternative forms in parentheses as we go, and I won't always comment on them. So, portanto, it means so. Or more formally, therefore, thus, or even hence. But generally, you would translate it as so. Portanto connects two independent clauses indicating some resulting action or consequence. So in the first example, I didn't study a lot, so I didn't do well on the test. Não estudei muito, portanto fui mal na prova. Minha irmã viajou, portanto não passou o Natal com a gente. So my sister traveled, so she didn't spend Christmas with us. Meu chefe não explicou bem a tarefa, portanto eu não fiz o que ele queria. So my boss didn't explain the task well, so I didn't do it how he wanted. Or I didn't do what he wanted. So, portanto means so. Okay, the last coordinating conjunction that we'll look at in this presentation is porque. Now, porque usually, at least in English, is classified as a subordinating conjunction. So, we'll look at it again in just a minute. But many Portuguese grammars classify porque as both, depending on its semantic function. So here, we're going to look at porque as joining two independent clauses, two sentences that could stand on their own. Notice, though, that the first clause of both of these happens to be in the imperative mood or is a command, in other words. 
So anyways, the point is, por que means because, and so it's really no-brainer when you're speaking Portuguese or listening to Portuguese because it's super common. So don't get too caught up about whether it's a coordinating or a subordinating conjunction. So, por que? Fecha a janela, close the window, because it's very cold. Fecha a janela porque está muito frio. Or, não me acorde muito cedo amanhã. Don't wake me up very early. Porque preciso descansar. Não me acorde muito cedo amanhã porque preciso descansar. Because I need to rest. So don't wake me up early tomorrow because I need to rest. So that wraps up our look at coordinating conjunctions in Brazilian Portuguese. Okay, so just a brief introduction to subordinating conjunctions. You can see some examples on this slide. First example, eu morava no Rio quando ela morava em São Paulo. Another way to say it, quando ela morava em São Paulo, eu morava no Rio. So, subordinating conjunctions are used to connect dependent clauses to independent clauses. So, a dependent clause, like quando ela morava em São Paulo, is a clause that is not a complete thought, not a complete sentence. So, subordinating conjunctions are the beginning of a dependent clause, a clause that cannot stand alone as a complete sentence and they're used to connect them to complete sentences or independent clauses. They usually immediate, immediately follow the independent clause, but they can also come before the independent clause. So look at the first two examples, or the second set. Vou comprar esse carro assim que receber meu salário. As soon as I receive my salary, or as soon as I receive my salary, I'm going to buy that car. Now, no comma is needed when the dependent clause comes at the end of the sentence. But usually when the dependent clause starts the sentence, introduces the sentence, a comma is used at the end of the dependent clause, as you can see in these examples. So let's look at our first subordinating conjunction, por que. Now I mentioned just a couple minutes ago in this presentation that por que is also included in some Brazilian Portuguese grammars as a coordinating conjunction. But we're going to look at here seeing it used as a subordinating conjunction, beginning a subordinating uh, or a dependent clause. So this is a subordinating conjunction, por que or como or já que, that links a dependent clause to an independent clause indicating the cause. Meu pai ficou com raiva. My dad got mad. Por que eu perdi meu telefone celular? So my dad got mad because I lost my cell phone. So notice that phrase or that clause, because I lost my cell phone, is a dependent clause, a subordinate clause. It cannot stand on its own. Carolina terminou com Claudio porque ele ignorava as mensagens dela. So again, because he ignored her messages is not a complete sentence, not an independent clause. It's a dependent clause. Therefore, por que ele ignorava is a subordinating conjunction. Clearly, one of the most common subordinating conjunctions is the word que, meaning that. It's used to introduce a dependent clause that actually functions as a noun or as the complement or object of the verb in the main clause. Examples. Quero que vocês respondam em breve. I want you to answer soon. Você precisa que eu passe no mercado? Do you need, and then the noun that comes after that, the object is, for me to go to the store. Ela sabia que seu filho se atrasaria. She knew that her son would be late. É importante que eles comprem as passagens hoje. So again, this one is very obvious, kind of a no-brainer. Que is a subordinating a conjunction that means that. Another really common one, really obvious one, that probably doesn't even need to be in this presentation because it's so common and so obvious, is se, meaning if or whether. So, se is a subordinating conjunction that introduces a dependent clause that functions as a noun, or it can indicate conditions. Let's look at the examples. Não sei se nós poderíamos ir. I don't know if we'll be able to go. Você quer saber se ela viaja amanhã? Do you want to know if she travels tomorrow? So again, if she travels tomorrow is not a complete sentence. It's a dependent clause, so we have a subordinating conjunction. Let's look at examples of if or se 
uh, indicating conditions. Eu não vou se você não for. If you don't go, I'm not going. Se você não for, eu não vou. Me avisa se a próxima aula for cancelada, tá? Let me know if the next class is canceled, okay? Or, inverting it, se a próxima aula for cancelada, comma, me avisa, tá? Okay, moving on to caso, another subordinating conjunction, not quite as common as si or que. Caso means in the event that and if. And you'll notice that caso usually will introduce a clause in the subjunctive mood, okay? So it introduces a dependent clause indicating conditions in the event that. You can call me in the event that you need help. Or leave a message in the event that I don't pick up the phone. Você pode me ligar caso precise de ajuda. Caso precise de ajuda, pode me ligar. So you can see the, the two different structures, the two different word orders. Deixe um recado caso eu não atenda o telefone. So verb in the subjunctive. Caso não, eu não atenda o telefone, deixe um recado. All right, the next one is para que, the next subordinating conjunction, or a fim de que. If you speak Spanish, this one will be very familiar to you. It means so that or in order that. It also will introduce a clause in which the verb is conjugated in the subjunctive. So, para que or a fim de que introduces a dependent clause indicating purpose or objective. Minha mãe me deu dinheiro para que fosse ao cinema. She gave me money so that I would go to the movies or I could go to the movies. Eu te emprestei o livro para que estudasse para a prova, so that you would study for the exam. Vou assinar esse canal. I'm going to subscribe to that channel, so that, para que vejamos o jogo. So, in theory, these could be inverted as well. Para que vejamos o jogo, vou assinar esse canal. But this particular word order that I have on the slide would be more common. All right, and here we have quando, another very obvious, very common and frequent subordinating conjunction that means when. So quando is a subordinating conjunction that introduces a dependent clause obviously relating to time. When we have more time, we're going to talk about that issue. Quando tivermos mais tempo, vamos conversar sobre esse assunto. So the word that follows quando in this particular example is in the future subjunctive. When we have more time in the future. Vamos jogar tênis quando parar de chover. Or, quando parar de chover, vamos jogar tênis. We're going to play tennis when it stops raining. So again, when it stops raining is a dependent clause. It's not a complete thought or grammatical sentence on its own. A Mariana não gosta quando chego atrasado. She doesn't like it when I arrive late. Similarly, enquanto, meaning while, is very common, very frequent. It's very similar usage with English or Spanish, so it's not, it's not difficult. So, enquanto is a subordinating conjunction that's going to introduce a dependent clause indicating an action in progress, something that's going on. Eu gosto de assistir Netflix enquanto faço meus deveres de casa. So, Enquanto faço meus deveres de casa, eu gosto de assistir Netflix. I like to watch Netflix while I'm doing my homework. Enquanto ela via televisão, while she was watching TV, eu preparava o almoço. Again, I can invert that. Eu preparava o almoço enquanto ela via televisão, while she was watching TV. Me espera aqui enquanto eu estiver fazendo as compras. Future subjunctive. Wait here for me while I'm shopping. Me espera aqui enquanto eu estiver fazendo as compras. Another subordinating conjunction that has to do with time is assim que, meaning as soon as. So, this is a subordinating conjunction that introduces a dependent clause indicating a precise moment. O mecânico disse que vai telefonar assim que o carro ficar pronto. So, when is he going to call? As soon as the car is ready. Or, inverting it, assim que o carro ficar pronto, o mecânico vai telefonar. Something like that. Assim que receber meu salário, vou reservar os voos. As soon as I get paid, I'm going to reserve the flights. Or, inverting it, vou reservar os voos assim que receber meu salário. 
saí da reunião assim que anunciaram os resultados. So this is just in the past, simple past. As soon as they announced, they announced the results, assim que anunciaram os resultados, saí da reunião. I left the meeting. Another very frequent uh, subordinating conjunction relating to time is antes de, or less frequently, antes que, meaning before. So, this conjunction introduces a dependent clause indicating an earlier time frame. Eu não sabia falar português antes de mudar para o Brasil. I didn't know how to speak Portuguese before I moved or before moving to Brazil. Again, I can invert these. Antes de mudar para o Brasil, não sabia falar português. Antes de viajarmos, temos que pegar os passaportes. Or, temos que pegar os passaportes antes de viajarmos. Before traveling, we have to get our passports. Now, I could rephrase this using antes que and the present subjunctive. Antes que viajemos, temos que pegar os passaportes. But that's not as common, that particular construction. Lave as mãos antes de se sentar à mesa. Wash your hands before sitting at the table. So again, before sitting at the table, a dependent clause, not a complete sentence, not a full thought, until I combine it with that main clause or, or independent clause, lave as mãos. So sort of the inverse of antes de or antes que is depois de or depois que or após, meaning after. So another subordinating conjunction, introducing an dependent clause, indicating a later time frame, obviously. Depois de mudar para o Brasil, me inscrevi em uma aula de português. So, after moving to Brazil, I enrolled in a Portuguese class. Again, I can invert the order. Me inscrevi ou inscrevi-me em uma aula de português depois de mudar para o Brasil. O Tomás achou um, um emprego depois de procurar durante várias semanas. He found a job after searching for several weeks. Vamos trocar os presentes. Depois que soar meia-noite. We're going to exchange gifts after the strike of midnight. So all of the previous subordinating conjunctions that we've seen are more or less informal and fairly common. With embora, we're going to transition into some subordinating conjunctions that are a little more formal sounding. You'll still hear them in speech, but you'll definitely see them in writing as well. Embora means although, even though, or in spite of the fact that. It's a subordinating conjunction that introduces dependent clauses that indicate a contrary condition. So, embora esteja fazendo sol, faz muito frio hoje. So, even though it's, uh, it's sunny, I had to think about it for a second, even though it's sunny, it's very cold today. And I can flip that. Faz muito frio hoje, embora esteja fazendo sol. Meu pai não comprou o carro vermelho, embora minha mãe tenha gostado dele. So he didn't buy the red car, even though, or although, or in spite of the fact that my mother liked it. So one thing to point out about embora is that it always requires the subjunctive in that dependent clause. All right, another sort of formal uh, subordinating conjunction in, in Brazilian Portuguese is a medida que. It means as, and it introduces a dependent clause indicating that something is happening in proportion. So, for example, meu avô está ficando mais esquecido à medida que envelhece. So, as he gets older, à medida que envelhece, he's becoming more and more forgetful. So, those two things are sort of in balance, in proportion. Or, à medida que o nosso negócio cresce, crescem também os nossos gastos. So, as our business grows, our expenses also grow, à medida que. Notice the, the accent mark, right? called crazy here on a medida que. Quanto mais, quanto menos, right? The more or the less are subordinating conjunctions that introduce, in, uh, introduce dependent clauses that indicate frequency or quantity. So, quanto mais treino meu francês, the more I practice my French. Quanto mais treino meu francês, mais confiante me sinto na hora de falar. Right? The more confident I feel when I speak. Or, quanto menos vídeos você assistir, mais barato sairá sua conta de internet. So, the fewer videos you watch, the cheaper your internet bill will be. Quanto mais, quanto menos. The more, the less, the fewer, etc. 
All right, desde que or contanto que are subordinating conjunctions that mean as long as or provided that, right? They introduce a dependent clause indicating a condition, so they will usually trigger the subjunctive mood as well. Você irá bem na prova desde que estude bastante. Or, desde que estude bastante, você irá bem na prova. So as long as you study, or provided that you study a lot, you're going to do well on the test. Or, provided that we save that amount of money each month, we'll be able to travel next year. Desde que poupemos essa quantidade todo mês, poderemos viajar no ano que vem. Mesmo que, or mesmo se, si, is a subordinating conjunction that means even if or even though. It introduces a dependent clause indicating a condition and also triggers the subjunctive. Have a look. Vamos correr no parque mais tarde, mesmo que chova. Even if it rains, we're going to run in the park. So, mesmo que chova, vamos correr no parque mais tarde. Or, mesmo que você não queira, vai ter que trabalhar sexta noite. Vai ter que trabalhar sexta noite, mesmo que não queira. Even if you don't want to, you're going to have to work Friday night. Even if or even though. Mesmo que. All right. A não ser que or a menos que is a subordinating conjunction that means unless. And it introduces a dependent clause indicating an exception and also will trigger the subjunctive mood. Let's have a look. Você não deve comprar esse celular. You shouldn't buy that cell phone unless it's on sale. A não ser que esteja com desconto. Or, a não ser que esteja com desconto esse celular, você não deve comprá-lo. A não ser que piore a crise. So, unless the crisis gets worse, meu pai vai se aposentar ano que vem. My father's going to retire next year. Meu pai vai se aposentar ano que vem, a não ser que piore a crise. So, a não ser ou a menos que piore a crise, unless. All right, thanks for bearing with me so far. We're done talking about conjunctions, coordinating and subordinating conjunctions, what they mean, where they're placed. We're going to transition, pun intended, to a discussion of transition words and phrases. So what are they? These are words and phrases that are going to be used to show how one independent clause, one sentence, relates to the one that comes before it. So it's a way of connecting sentences together and even paragraphs together in a longer discourse so that it's more coherent and cohesive. So your ideas are tied together more logically. So for example, a eleição foi validada pela ONU. The election was certified by the UN. Despite that, apesar disso, so we have a translation that marks a contrast or is going to introduce an opposing idea. That's its function. A oposição exigiu uma recontagem. So, despite that fact, the opposition demanded a recount. You can see in this example that transition words or phrases are followed by a comma, that they themselves always follow a full stop, so they come after a period or a semicolon. They cannot be used after a comma. And, as I mentioned, they show how one independent clause relates to the one before it. So these relationships can be of many different kinds. They can, transitions can connect similar ideas. They can add information. They can be used to introduce examples. They can make comparisons. They can indicate the purpose or reasons. They can state conditions. They can generalize, interject commentary, summarize, indicate some, some type of time sequence. There are many types of relationships between sentences that transitions help to establish. All right, so we're going to look at several common translations in Brazilian Portuguese. All right, so the first transition word we're going to look at today is então, which means so, therefore, thus, or even hence. This transition, this transition word, então, indicates a resulting action or consequence. So, for example, ela sentia frio. She was cold. Então, levou um casaco, luvas e uma toca de lã. So she was cold, therefore she took a coat, gloves, and a wool hat. Você não tem passaporte? Então, não pode sair do país. So as a consequence, as a result, thus, hence, então, não pode sair do país. 
Okay, this one obviously uh, is self-explanatory. Geralmente means generally or usually. So it's a transition word that indicates usual condi conditions or actions. For example, geralmente, comma, os alunos estudam bastante um dia antes da prova. Não posso recomendar um bom restaurante. Geralmente como em casa. So I usually eat at home. Na verdade, like the first two we saw, is very common in speech. This one's becoming more and more common. Na verdade means actually, or in fact, or truth is. So this transition phrase, na verdade, is used to clarify or indicate a difference or a discrepancy, usually. So, na verdade, eu gosto mais de filmes de suspense. So somebody says, do you like uh, horror films? You might say, hmm, na verdade... Eu gosto mais de filmes de suspense. Actually, or in fact, uh, na verdade, ela nem queria ir ao cinema com ele. Right? In fact, or actually, or the truth is, she didn't even want to go to the movies with him. Mas aceitou o convite. The use of this one obviously is um, also pretty self-explanatory. É claro que means of course or naturally. And this is a transition phrase that's used to emphasize the obvious nature of a statement, okay? So, não diga isso. Don't say that. É claro que gostei do presente. Naturally, or of course I like the present. Don't say that. É claro que sei onde ela mora. Of course I know where she lives. Ela é minha irmã. Por exemplo, is another transition phrase that we use the equivalent quite a bit in English, for example, or for instance. So this is a phrase used to introduce examples, clearly. Uh, meu irmão tem muitos talentos. Por exemplo, ele canta e dança muito bem. Right? My brother has lots of talents, for example, or for instance, por exemplo, he sings and dances very well. Eu conheço alguns livros de Jorge Amado. I know I'm familiar with some of the books of Jorge Amado. Por exemplo, já li Gabriela Cravo e Canela e País do Carnaval. So, for instance, I've already read these two novels. Very straightforward. Por exemplo. Além disso, this is a transition phrase that means besides, or additionally, or even more formally, furthermore, or moreover. So it's used to introduce additional related ideas. So I'm adding something that's related to what came before. Laura perdeu seu emprego. She lost her job. Além disso, teve que mudar de apartamento. So you see, I'm adding the transition after the full stop introduced by the semicolon. Além disso, she had to change apartments. Esse mercado fica perto da minha casa. So that grocery store is close to my house. Além disso, so furthermore, moreover, additionally, tem os melhores preços. It has the best prices. Apesar disso means despite that, right? So it's a transition phrase used to introduce an unexpected or surprising result. Tinha muito trânsito na rodovia. Tinha muito trânsito na rodovia. There was a lot of traffic on the highway. Apesar disso, despite that, Conseguimos chegar na hora certa. We were able to arrive on time. So, despite that, apesar disso, a Cláudia não estudou com o grupo. She didn't study with the group. Despite that, apesar disso, ela foi muito bem na prova. She did very well on the test. Mesmo assim is a transition phrase that means even so or but still. And it's used to introduce a contrast or contradiction. So you state something and you say, but still, or even so, and then you introduce contrasting or contradictory information. So for example, a comissão não revisou todos os relatórios. Mesmo assim, comma, aprovou a proposta. So the committee didn't review all of the reports. Even so, but still, it approved the proposal. O José sempre briga com o namorado dele. Mesmo assim, querem se casar. So he always argues or fights with his girlfriend. Even so, or still, they want to get married. The last of our common or informal, I should say informal, uh, transition words or phrases is afinal. Afinal means after all. So it's a transition word that's used to describe or to indicate recognition or acceptance, sometimes with kind of a resigned tone. For example, 
Acabei imprimindo duas cópias da foto. Afinal, eu também queria uma. So, after all, I wanted one too. So, I ended up printing two copies because, after all, afinal, eu também queria uma. O professor cancelou a palestra. O professor canceled the presentation. Afinal, ninguém queria assistir lá. Right? After all, nobody wanted to see it or to watch it. All right, moving on to the final stage of our lesson, we're going to talk about some uh, transitional words and phrases that are a little bit more formal, used in more, more formal types of speech and writing. First one is portanto, meaning therefore or thus. Doesn't thus sound kind of formal? So portanto is a transition used to introduce a logical consequence or result. For example, o preço do petróleo tem aumentado muito. The price of oil has increased a lot. Portanto, therefore, nossa empresa, nossa empresa tem utilizado menos, mais energia solar. So, as a result, or therefore, thus, our company has been using more solar energy. Construíram uma nova estrada. They built a new highway. Therefore, portanto, agora leva muito menos tempo para chegar à capital. So, thus, or therefore, now it takes much less time to get to the capital. Contudo, contudo, or entretanto, are uh, transition words that mean however or nevertheless. They're a little bit more formal. Uh, so, they're used to introduce something unexpected or contradictory. For example, a empresa foi multada pelo governo. The company was fined by the government. Nevertheless, it continued polluting the river. Contudo, o entretanto continuou poluindo o rio. Essa professora foi demitida pela nossa faculdade. That professor was fired uh, from our college. Contudo, foi contratada em uma outra universidade. However, or nevertheless, she was hired by another university. If you want to use the uh, transitional expression on the other hand, in Portuguese it's por outro lado. So this phrase is used to introduce an alternative suggesting balance, right? The relationship between the two independent clauses. Aquela casa é muito cara. Por outro lado, tem bastante espaço. So you can see how those two um, independent clauses balance each other out in terms of logic. The house is very expensive. On the other hand, it has a lot of space. Similarly, o governo aumentou o imposto sobre a renda. Por outro lado, reduziu os impostos sobre vendas. The government increased the income tax, but on the other hand, it reduced sales tax. Por outro lado. Ao contrário is a transition expression or transition phrase that means on the contrary or in contrast. Two kind of different uses, related but different. So this phrase is used to emphasize disagreement or contrast. Let's look at the first example. Here we have kind of disagreement. Vocês acham que crescer nesse setor será fácil? Do you think it's going to be easy to grow in that sector? Ao contrário, será muito difícil. On the contrary, it will be very difficult. Or here, emphasizing contrast. Os alunos que só assistiram o filme não aprenderam muito. The students that just watched the movie didn't learn a lot. Ao contrário, or in contrast, os alunos que também leram o romance aprenderam bastante. So, in contrast, the students that also read the novel learned quite a bit. Deste modo, deste modo means thus or in this way. So it's a transition phrase used to introduce a consequence or resulting condition. For example, Ela prepara várias refeições nos fins de semana. Deste modo, não tem que cozinhar durante a semana. So in this way or thus, she doesn't have to cook during the week. She's one of those meal preppers. Prepara várias refeições nos fins de semana. Deste modo, não tem que cozinhar durante a semana. Meu amigo só compra roupas com desconto. So my friend only buys clothes when it's on sale. Deste modo, economiza bastante. So in this way, by doing it thusly, he saves quite a bit. Por causa disso means because of that, or consequently as a result. So it's a transition phrase used to introduce a consequence or resulting condition. For example, o dólar subiu bastante nas últimas semanas. The dollar's been going up quite a bit in the past few weeks. Por causa disso, because of that, resolvemos não viajar fora do Brasil. 
we decided not to travel outside of Brazil because of that or as a result. Meus amigos ganharam uma bolsa para estudar na França. My friends got a scholarship to study in France. As a result, or consequently, or because of that, voltaram a estudar francês. Por causa disso, voltaram a estudar francês. So because of that, they began studying French again. Da mesma forma, ou do mesmo modo, are transition uh, phrases that mean likewise, or similarly, or even by the same token, and they're used to introduce a complementary idea. So that's the relationship, is complementarity. Crianças precisam de carinho. So kids need affection. Da mesma forma, precisam de, de disciplina. So by the same token, they need discipline. Tem havido muitos conflitos entre republicanos e democratas nos Estados Unidos. There's been a lot of conflict between Republicans and Democrats in the U.S. Similarly, or likewise, os partidos, da mesma forma, os partidos de esquerda e direita no Brasil têm se confrontado. No final das contas is a transition phrase that means ultimately, in the end, or at the end of the day. So it's used to state a conclusion, often with a tone of resignation or reluctance. So for example, no final das contas, o Senado vai aprovar o projeto de lei apesar da oposição. So at the end of the day, we all know the Senate's going to approve the bill despite the opposition, that reluctance or resignation. No final das contas, a economia não crescerá sem investimentos estrangeiros. So in the end, or ultimately, uh, at the end of the day, the economy won't grow without foreign investment. And our final, a little bit more formal, right, um, transition expression or phrase is seja como for, which means in any case or in any event, at any rate, regardless, these are all equivalents. Um, seja como for is used to indicate recognition or acceptance, often again it, with that reluctant tone. É possível que meu amigo tire uma boa nota na prova, so my friend might get a good grade. In any event, or regardless, he's going to have to repeat this year. So, é possível que meu amigo tire uma boa nota na prova. Seja como for, irá repetir de ano. Or, seja como for, o presidente precisará do apoio da oposição. So, in any event, or at any rate, the president is going to need the support of the opposition party. Seja como for, o presidente precisará do apoio da oposição. All right, that's it for today's lesson. Hope you found it to be informative and useful. If so, would you please like, comment, and share with others? Don't forget to add and follow me on social media for updates, and be sure to visit the Professor Jason channel again soon. See you next time. Até breve. Ciao. <laughs> Tá no terra, tá tudo bacalhado